What is going on guys welcome back in today's video we're going to build a bitcoin miner in python so let us get right into it all right so first of all before we get into coding i want to mention that in this video we're not going to build a professional complete perfect bitcoin mining software so if you're interested in bitcoin mining for a profit first of all this video is not financial advice in any way but besides that, I would just not recommend using a simple Python script that you made on your own. I would recommend using professional hardware, professional software. And even if you build your own software, I would recommend doing it in C, C++, in a low level language that allows you to max out the performance because Python is kind of slow. So having said all that, we're going to build a Bitcoin mining script in Python. So we're going to learn about the process. We're going to see how it's done. We're going to do it. We're going to implement the function. But again, I would just not recommend using this um, in, in actual profit oriented Bitcoin mining. So the first thing we do is we import the hashlib module, the hash library. And this is just a library that's going to allow us to, to take the hash or to compute the hash of an input. And the basic idea of Bitcoin mining is that you have some information in a block. So for example, the block number, the transactions, you have um, the, the previous hash and so on. And you, what you wanna do is you wanna take that input and turn it into a hash or what you do in blockchain is you turn it into a hash. However, for Bitcoin, you want that hash to have a certain amount of leading zeros. Let's say four, let's say eight, 16, whatever. Um, this depends on the difficulty but you're trying to get a hash that has, let's say four leading zeros. This is just an example here. So let's say you have a hash like this or something like that. And in this hash, you have all the information. I mean, in the hash itself, you don't have the information, but this hash was computed with the information, with a certain block number, with certain transactions, with a certain previous hash and so on. And what we wanna do now is we wanna actually have the same information and slightly change the input by adding a so-called nonce. This is just a number that you add to the information in the hope that the result is going to have a certain format, for example, 0, 0, 0, 0, and then some other stuff like that, for example. So if you find a nonce, just a number that you add in the end, and this number with the information produces a hash like that, you have mined... Uh, one unit of that cryptocurrency. Now, of course, in Bitcoin, you don't have four leading zeros. I think at the moment you have like 16 or eight or more than 16, I don't know. Uh, but the point is you you gotta find some non, some number that you add um, that produces those leading zeros. If you can't find that number, you haven't mined a Bitcoin. Once you find that number as the first person, you have mined that Bitcoin. Um, and there is no shortcut because the hash function is kind of unpredictable. It's quite random. So a slight change in the input is going to result in a radical change in the output. So it's very hard to actually um, to actually find the result. So, or, so basically what you can do is you can just guess. And we're going to build a script that is going to guess and mine. And it's, uh, it's a very lucky process, actually. You just need to... It's, it's like... Uh, rolling dice, you need to find the right number and then you have the hash and the one who finds the number first is going to make the most money. So let's start by defining the function here. Let's say we have def mine and in mine we're going to have uh, the block number and we're going to have transactions and we're going to have previous hash for example. And we're going to leave this empty for now. Let me just show you what an actual hash result looks like. So we're going to say print hashlib dot SHA-256, which is the hashing algorithm that Bitcoin uses. Uh, let's just hash the string hello world here. We need to encode it first. And then we need to hex digest the output. And then we can run this. So we're going to navigate to the directory and we're going to say python3 main.py. And as you can see, this is the hash of the hello world string, the SHA-256 hash. And if we go ahead and change a slight letter here, so if I change the L to a T, for example, let's just go ahead and do that. Uh, now we have hello world with T and D. Uh, the hash is going to be completely different. So I can rerun this 
and you can see that the hash is completely different. A slight change in the input produces a radical change in the output. And this is what we're going to try to do. We're going to change the input in a slight way. We're not going to change anything in the transactions or the block number. We're just going to add a nonce number and we're going to try to produce a hash with four, eight, 16 leading zeros, something like that. Um, and we're going to do this in the mind function here. So let's get into it. We're going to first say, well, before we go into the mind function, let's first define two values up here. First, we're going to define a nonce limit. This is the maximum number that we're going to check. I'm just going to choose a high number here. Uh, and then we're going to also define how many zeros we're looking for. So zeros equals four in the beginning here, because four is going to be easy to find. Um, and what we're going to do in the mind function here is we're going to say for nonce in range, for nonce in range nonce limit. So up until this limit, we're going to try all the numbers. And what we're going to do is we're going to build a base text. So we're going to say string of the block number plus the transaction hash plus the previous hash in string format, obviously. Uh, plus the string of this nonce, and this is going to be the new factor, the random factor, um, or not the random factor, but the changing input factor. Um, this is going to be the base text. And then we're going to try to find a hash that has four leading zeros in this case. So we're going to say hash try, so hash underscore try equals hash lip dot SHA-256 base text and code. and hex digest like that. This is going to be the hash that is the result of the data that we already have plus this additional nonce. And we're now going to say, what do we have here? Unused variable, okay. Uh, we're going to say, if this hash try, which is a string, starts with the character zero, but how many times? In this case, four times, because we're using this variable here. If we have this four times, then we're going to say print f string found hash with nonce. And we're going to say nonce here. And we're going to return the hash as a proof. If we go through all the numbers without finding such a hash, we will just return negative one. You can also print an error message or raise an exception, whatever. So this is the basic idea here. Now, before we apply this on actual Bitcoin data, we're just going to um, to do this on our own fictional data here. So we're just going to imagine some values. Let's say block number equals 24. We're going to say <clears throat> transactions equals, and then we get some transaction hashes like, uh, like that, for example, just some imaginary stuff. And then we're going to say uh, previous hash is going to be something similar like that, for example, I don't know. Um, this is just transactions, previous hash and so on block number. And we can go ahead and try to come up with a combined, uh, combined text here. And we're just going to say string of block number plus transactions plus previous hash. And we will just print the hash lib dot sha 256, not sha 3 to the 56, just oh, actually like that sha 256 um, off this combined text here. Encode it, obviously, hex digest, obviously. And this is going to be the basic hash without any nonsense. So we're going to try to to see what this is, we're going to go into the bash here, execute it again. This is the hash that we currently have. Now, of course, you can see as a proof here, if I change this to two, so I changed a one to a two, the result is going to be completely different here. So let's just leave it at a two here. What we're trying to do is we're trying to now add nonces here at the end so that we end up with leading zero. So if I add 78, for example, of course, as a string like that, if I add 78 here, I'm going to again get a different hash without leading zeros in this case. But what we're going to do in this function is we're going to try all of this. So 
we're going to now delete this here and we're going to call the mine function on the block number on the transactions and on the previous hash and we're going to see if we can find any uh, nonce for four leading zeros which shouldn't be too hard so we're actually going to uh, oh what happened here there you go and it found the hash with nonce 107,617 we can actually see if that's true. So we're going to undo all this here. And we're going to, what was the number? Uh, 107617. 107617. So this should be uh, what is needed to produce a hash with four leading zeros. And as you can see, it is. And it was quite fast, even though we had to go through so many numbers, the hash is found quite quickly. Now, of course, I can also try to, to uh, find six or eight zeros, but it's get, it gets harder and harder. It's very unlikely to find them. So it's not that easy. With four numbers, it's quite easy. Or four zeros, it's quite easy. But if I go to six, probably it's going to take a little bit longer already. Uh, we need to call the mine function again. So... Let's just call mine block number again, transactions again, and previous hash again. And it's still working, working, working. I'm not even sure if it's going to find anything in, in a quick time here. Um, but you can see it takes quite some while already, quite some time already. Maybe it's going to be done in a second. Maybe it's going to take two minutes. Sometimes if you're looking for 16 zeros, you're going to maybe wait a year or something, depending on your computational power. It's very unlikely. You can actually go ahead while this is, or actually let's stop this here. Um, you can actually calculate uh, the likelihood of finding such a number. Since you have hexadecimal numbers here, for one position, you can have 16 different characters. You can have zeros, one, two, three, and so on, then A, B, C, D, E, F. And in order to get uh, 16 zeros in a row or eight zeros in a row, what you need to do is you need to, uh, to, to take the probability one over 16, which is the probability of getting, getting a zero in a particular place to the power of how many zeros you're waiting for. And this is the likelihood of getting it first try. And then you can, of course, um, say one minus that and multiply it with itself to see uh, how likely it is to not have this after the millionth try or something like that. Uh, but it's but it's not an easy thing to find those Bitcoin hashes. So if you're actually interested in doing this on actual Bitcoin, uh, you can go to the website blockchain.com BTC. Now, this is the first Bitcoin block ever mined. So this is not something that you should uh, be working on. But here you can see that we're working with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight leading zeros. This was pretty easy then. Um, and the reward was 50 Bitcoin. Now, nowadays, it's not 50 Bitcoin anymore. Nowadays, you're getting, I think, 6.25 Bitcoin, and you're going to have to find 16, if not more leading zeros, you just go to blockchain.com. And I think, uh, actually to blockchain.com. Oh my god, now it's going to lag again. Sorry. Okay, I had some lags. What I was trying to say is that if you go on blockchain.com, and then you go to Explorer, you can see the latest mined blocks, and you can get the information from there. I'm not going to click on it right now, because my PC is not the best one. Uh, but basically, you can get all the information on hashes and on transaction hashes and block numbers, which is the height actually, uh, from there, and then you can use this information to mine the next block. Again, as I said, if you're going to do actual professional Bitcoin mining, not just for educational purposes, I would recommend getting some actual professional hardware and software because that is not the most efficient way to mine Bitcoins, obviously. All right, so that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.